For today's headlines, Palas to LGUs impose granular lockdowns amid spike in COVID-19 cases. Comelec holds nationwide mock elections. Promote use of Malasakit centers, LGU urged. Tamer inflation seen in December. Bureau of Immigration deported more than 3,000 illegal aliens. Businessman caught with 534.7 million pesos shabu. Go Laws Gratuity Pay Provision. Good morning, I am Venice Bautista and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Today is December 30, 2021, and here are the latest news of this Thursday morning. Malacanang called on local government units to impose small-scale lockdowns in coronavirus-hit areas to control virus spread, saying the recent spike in the number of cases has been concerning. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles issued the call on Wednesday as the Philippines recorded over 300 additional cases per day in five consecutive days, which experts attributed to increased social mobility during the holidays. The palace official added that while the government has veered away from imposing large-scale curbs, local officials are authorized to restrict mobility in their jurisdiction should there be clustering of infections. Nograles said that granular lockdown has never been out of the equation, and LGUs can impose granular lockdown if they can see that clustering of COVID-19 cases are happening. The National Pandemic Task Force is set to announce this week the new alert levels that will be imposed in cities and regions from January 1 to 15, and Nograles and other officials were tight-lipped when asked if some areas will be downgraded to alert level 1, the most lenient lockdown classification, or if provinces will be escalated to stricter alert levels. The entire Philippines remains under alert level 2, where restaurants, barbershops, hair spas, hair salons, fitness studios, tourist attractions, and cinemas are permitted to operate. Meanwhile, Nograles reminded the public to continue adhering to health protocols, especially during New Year celebrations, as family gatherings and festivities will be held. In preparation for the 2022 polls, the Commission on Elections on Wednesday held a nationwide mock election in 34 voting centers nationwide with a total of 22,746 registered voters. The mock poll started at 6 a.m. in several schools in the National Capital Region, Isabela, Albay, Negros Oriental, Davao del Sur, Leyte, and Maguindanao. Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez said that they do not expect the mock elections to be perfect. However, they hope to see possible problems that they might encounter in the upcoming polls in 2022. During a briefing on Wednesday afternoon, he disclosed that a precinct in Ususan, Taguig has exceeded the expected number of voters. They also received a report where the ballot has expanded due to exposure to the elements and in light of recent rains in Negros Oriental State University, where the electoral board members had to slightly trim the margins of the ballot without touching the timing marks in order to fit into the vote counting machines, or VCM. The ballots were successfully accepted and scanned by the vote counting machines, consistent with the protocols. Precincts closed at noontime except in Pasay City, which closed at 5 p.m. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police Director for Operations, Police Brigadier General Valeriano de Leon, said election hotspots will be identified by January, but the locations may be added or removed depending on the situation on the ground. Suzette Radillas of Comelec, Taguig City, said that they encountered some problems on the conduct of the mock elections. The Department of the Interior and Local Government has urged local government units to promote the use of Malasakit centers to bring the government's medical and health services closer to the people. 
DILG Secretary Eduardo M. Año said it is important that the people know that their health and welfare remain to be the priority of the government, especially in this time of the pandemic. The Malasakit Center is a one-stop shop for medical and health assistance established in all Department of Health hospitals and the Philippine General Hospital through Republic Act 11463 or the Malasakit Center Act. As of October 30, 2021, there are already 80 Malasakit Centers in Luzon, 37 in Mindanao, and 29 in the Visayas. Through the ILG Memorandum Circular 2021 and 138, Anyo directed Punong Barangays, City and Municipal Mayors, and Provincial Governors to advocate the access to Malasakit Center and lead in various information campaigns in their localities. He said that Punong Barangays are enjoined to organize advocacy activities to increase the awar- awareness in the community and to inform them on how they can take advantage of the health services offered by the government in Malasakit centers. Meanwhile, the DILG chief reminded mayors to provide assistance to their component barangays in carrying out the information drive in their respective jurisdictions. They may likewise post advocacy materials, Anya said, and monitor barangay compliance in the DILG circular. Apart from DOH, PGH and LGU, the DILG, Department of National Defense, Department of Justice, the Philippine National Police, and other public hospitals may also establish their own Malasakit Center. Tribune News on Key will be back after these reminders. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Masaya? Pagsama-sama! Si Harry Roque, ang pinakamagaling na spokesman, kaya inggit sa kanya ang oposisyon. Tama lang na ipinaglaban ko ang balik trabaho para bumalik ang kita ng mga nagtatrabaho at naghahanap buhay. Hindi pwedeng magutom ang pamilya. Dapat lang po, ingat buhay para sa hanap buhay. Basta trabaho, kita at hanap buhay ang nakataya. Nasa harap niyo po ako. Ibigay natin ang tudong suporta kay Harry. Botomoto Halalan 2022, The Daily Tribune Special Coverage. Masaya? Pagsama-sama! We are back on Tribune News on Q. Monetary authorities see inflation to trend lower in December, offering a range that is lower than the government's revised 4.3 to 4.5 percent target for the year. Banco Central ng Pilipinas Governor Benjamin Jokno said inflation in December could settle within the 3.5 and 4.3 percent band. Higher electricity rates, along with the uptick in food prices due to weather disturbances, are the primary sources of inflationary pressures during the month, Jokno said. While at it, the BSP chief reiterated on their commitment to remain vigilant on emerging price developments, helping the central bank achieve its mandate of keeping price stability in the market. Robert Dan Roses, chief economist at the Security Bank Corporation, offered a higher view, casting a 4.4% outlook for December, faster than the recorded 4.2% in November. He added that the downside risk may emanate from a wider spread of the Omicron variant. But nevertheless, the private economist said favorable base effects may help temper upside risks to inflation, providing the BSP further leeway in keeping its accommodative monetary policy stance. The Bureau of Immigration reported more than 3,000 illegal aliens this year. 
data obtained from the Bureau's Deportation and Implementation Unit showed a total of 3,142 illegal aliens were deported from January to November this year. Most of the deportees were Chinese nationals, totaling 2,875, followed by 90 Koreans, 81 Vietnamese, 27 Japanese nationals, and 19 Americans. Attorney Victor Andrew Siriban, BI Deportation and Implementation Unit Head, said in 2020, BI deported a total of 3,219 illegal aliens, many of whom were arrested from being fugitives from justice, undesirables, and overstaying foreigners. Immigration Commissioner Jaime Morente said, despite the pandemic, the Bureau will continue deporting aliens who have violated the Philippine Immigration Act. Miranda said the pandemic will not be hindrance in cleansing the country of illegal aliens. Charges for violation of Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 were filed by authorities on Wednesday morning against a businessman and his cohort after they were caught in possession of suspected shabu worth 534.7 million pesos in a buy-bust operation in Mandaluyong City on Monday evening. The suspects were identified as Mike Bautista, Abac, 32, businessman, and Edison Bolos de Guzman, 37, cook, both residents of Guadalupe Nuevo, Makati City. The suspects were arrested by joint operatives of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency's Special Enforcement Section, Pidea Intelligence Investigation Section, Armed Forces of the Philippines Intelligence Special Action Force, Task Force NOAA, National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, and the Philippine National Police Drug Enforcement Group at Tower 3 of Light Residences in Mandaluyong City at about 6 p.m. Seized in the operation were about 77.5 kilograms of suspected shabu worth 534,650,000 pesos and several drug paraphernalia. Tribune News on Q will be back. Stay with us. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Christmas Aya, Pagsama Sama. Ang Daily Tribune, may digital shows na din. Dahil sa mas lumalaki at mas lumalakas nating tribu, handog sa inyo ng Daily Tribune ang mga programang magbibigay buhay araw-araw. Be informed at mag good vibes tuwing umaga sa programang gising na. Be updated sa news and happenings sa Tribune News on Q. Mas kilalanin pa natin ang mga paborito niyong atleta sa programang The Athletes Tribune. Alamin ang latest entertainment sa programang What's Up. Ma-inspire sa mga kwentong hatid ng Fairfriend. Search lang ang Daily Tribune sa inyong Facebook at Tribune Now on YouTube. See you there, mga katribu! Makinig at makisali sa usapan every Friday night at 6pm sa I Speak Katribu Podcast. Samahan si na Daniel at Alvin na pag-usapan ang mga relevant topic na tiyak kakarelatean nyo mga katribu. At pagdating ng Sunday at 7pm, speak your mind with our I Speak program na sasagot sa mga tanong regarding the latest and relevant issues sa paligid natin. I-like at i-follow nyo ang Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube para updated ka sa mga latest episode namin mga katribu. Mga katribu, tara na't makiisa at matuto sa mga public service programs hatid ng kalingang katribu. Tuwing lunes, nandyan ang usapang business na magbibigay tips at inspirasyon sa mga aspiring entrepreneurs kasama si Nakompi Manalo at Vernon Velasco. Tuwing Berkules, usapang pangkulusuga naman ang tatalakayin ni Ms. Cory Quirino sa health and wellness. At tuwing Bernes naman, kung legal advice ang kailangan mo, sagot ka na ng legal diaries kasama si Elmer Navarro Manuel at mga guest lawyers. Lahat ng niya mapapanood tuwing alas 13.30 ng hapon sa Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube. Fun and inspiring na kwentuhan? Sagot na yan ang programang Spotlight ng Daily Tribune. Makipagkwentuhan at kilalani ng iba't ibang personalidad na kilala sa kanika nilang larangan. Manood at makinig sa mga inspiring stories.
series na kanilang ibabahagi kasama si Nina Ventura at Jojo Silvestre. Be ready na mamangha at matuwa every Thursday alas dos ng hapon dito lang sa Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube. Botomoto Halalan 2022 The Daily Tribune Special Coverage Masaya, pagsama-sama! You are still watching Tribune News on Q. Senator Christopher Bongo recently welcomed President Rodrigo Duterte's approval to grant a one-time gratuity pay to all contract of service and job order workers in the government in recognition of their important role in the delivery of public service amid the coronavirus disease 2019 pandemic and other crisis situations the country has faced this past year. The president issued Administrative Order 46, which covers all contract of service and job order workers employed in national government agencies, including state universities and colleges, government-owned and controlled corporations, as well as local water districts, on Wednesday. The administrative order likewise encourages local government units to provide gratuity to their eligible employees. Under the provision, contract of service and job order workers are entitled to a maximum of 5,000 pesos each, provided they have rendered at least four months of service as of December 15, 2021. Those employed for less than four months may still receive the gratuity pay on a pro-rata basis. Workers who have rendered at least three months of service are entitled to a maximum of 4,000 pesos, Meanwhile, those with at least two months or less of service may receive up to 3,000 and 2,000 pesos, respectively. The funds to implement the AO will be sourced from the maintenance and other operating expenses, allotments of government agencies and SUC, corporate operating budgets of the GOCC and LWD, and local government funds. And that wraps up the stories this morning. But before we go, we would like to thank the following. The SM Store, Department of Tourism, Araneta City, MG Motors, Hina Motors, Security Bank, and Overseas Community Affairs Council member Alan Lin of Republic of China for their continued support. Again, this is Venice Bautista on Tribune News on Q, reminding you that we only have two days until 2022. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Good morning. Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. Download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS and Google Play for Android to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune invites you to join its Viber community, Katribu, to get updates on the hottest news on politics, business, sports, lifestyle, and entertainment. Emoticons of the Tribune mascot, Tarsito, are available on our community Viber.